Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're going to talk about predictions for 2019. Now we only have a few more days left in 2018 at the time of this recording so I figured let's jump in and see what I think is going to happen in the world of wrestling for the coming year. Now first up these aren't necessarily going to be in chronological order, but the first thing happens about a week from now. At Wrestle Kingdom number 13, I have Kenny Omega retaining the IWGP Championship. It's assumed he will lose the title because it's him versus Tanahashi, the, face, the ace of the generation. Also, his involvement with the rumored All Elite Wrestling and the rest of the Elite makes the assumption he's going to lose the belt here. I think they're going to pull a swerve. I think he's going to retain. And I think maybe he signs some kind of co-op deal where he works New Japan and All Elite or something to that nature. Because I don't really see him leaving Japan uh, at least not 100% leaving Japan at this point. I think he's firmly entrenched in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think he's built a fan base. He lives there. He likes it there. And I think they're going to pay him accordingly. So I think Kenny Omega retaining the, the uh, IWGP Championship is my first prediction. Now next up, it's going to happen in about a month. We're going to have the Royal Rumble. And I predict in the Women's Royal Rumble match, we're going to see Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair do the Bret Hart-Lex Luger finish, where both of them land on the floor at the same time. And instead of what we've seen at WrestleMania 10, where they both kind of did a round-robin thing with Yokozuna and also uh, Owen Hart being involved... What I think is going to happen coming from that, because of them both landing on the floor at the same time, we're going to see Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey, and I believe that that is going to be the main event of WrestleMania 35. And when I say main event, I'm not talking about one of three main events like they like to say. I'm talking the actual last match to go on the show. The real main event. Because they could say we have three main events. They could say we have a SmackDown and Raw main event. And there is a little bit of validity to it because they have two different products. But ultimately, the match that goes on last is the main event. And that's what I think is going to happen here. I think we're at the point in the women's revolution that the only thing left... The only barrier that hasn't been broken down is women re main eventing WrestleMania, and this feels like what what it should be. Fans, I think, would want Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. I think WWE wants to add Charlotte Flair in because they're high on Charlotte, which, again, she's a great wrestler. Don't get me wrong, it's no knock on her. But we have Becky Lynch, who's the biggest star in probably all of the WWE at this point. The hottest act they have. And Ronda Rousey, who's a bona fide star outside of wrestling. And you're going to add Charlotte, who, again, very deserving of the spot. But I think it muddles it a little bit. Fan-wise, I think as fans, we'd rather see the one-on-one -on -one match. But I think it's going to be a fan service slash them putting Charlotte in this big picture match as well. Now speaking of big picture and big time main event talents and big talents, I predict that a big WWE star 
is going to defect from WWE this year, whether it be from their contract being up, getting fired, or asking for their release. And when I say a big WWE star, I'm not talking someone like, and, and I don't mean no disrespect to these people, I'm not talking to Tyler Breeze or Heath Slater. I'm talking to someone in the uh, lines of a Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, a Rusev, maybe a Shinsuke Nakamura. I believe that one of these guys on the top of the card is going to get tired of the logjam, see that there's opportunities elsewhere, New Japan, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, All Elite Wrestling if it comes off the ground, NWA, depending what that does. I think that there's going to be someone that makes a jump from WWE, makes a cosmic shift, kind of like Christian did when he left to go to TNA, and Kurt Angle did when they left to go to TNA, or even bigger, but it won't be, I don't think it'll be anybody of this magnitude, like Hogan leaving for WCW, or even Bret Hart leaving for WCW. It's going to be something like, I believe something like that's bound to happen, because there is a lot of him. There's so much talent on the WWE roster right now that there's not spots for guys. We're seeing guys that should be top-level guys. They can't even get on the TV shows. So, to me, someone's going to get fr frustrated and fed up and jump ship. Speaking of that, I see the wrestling business. It's in an upswing. I believe another company is going to get a major television show. And I'm not talking Impact Moving Channels. I'm not talking about, you know, Ring of Honor on syndication or Access TV having New Japan. I'm talking a big cable channel at the very least, something like WGN, the History Channel, which we've seen is branching out into reality and other kinds of programming. Or even TNT jumping back into the fold. And again, bringing something like the aforementioned AEW All Elite Wrestling. Maybe giving Ring of Honor a more prominent TV show. Maybe even Billy Corgan and the NWA find a way to get onto this. And I think a television network's going to try and piggyback their success onto another wrestling company. And, I, and part of the reason for that is... Television media is kind of going the way of the dinosaur. It's being, you know, subscription services are taking over. So they're going to be fighting for content. They're fighting with the Netflixes, the Hulus of the world, and uh, all these other services that are coming out. Disney has their own streaming service. DC Comics has their own streaming service. Amazon has a streaming service. So we're seeing all these things popping up for different avenues for television. And traditional cable television is getting left on the, on the side of the road. So I believe cable television is going to do what television's always done and lean on pro wrestling. And one of these, one of the bigger cable channels is going to try and secure another promotion to run a show. Speaking of other promotions, Chris Jericho is going to wrestle a match in Impact Wrestling in an Impact ring. I mean, this one's kind of been hinted at severely. I almost didn't put it on the list because of that reason. He's really good friends with Don Callis, who's working behind the scenes at Impact Wrestling. And we've seen him wrestle at All In. We've seen him wrestle in New Japan. So there is a precedent for him wrestling outside of the WWE. There is now a precedent for him doing appearances in America, outside of the WWE, I think he at least does a one-off showing an impact, whether that be Bound for Glory or Glor, you know, uh, Slammiversary or any one of their big shows. I think that they're going to hype a Jericho match. Jericho is going to at least have a one-off appearance in Impact this year. Maybe even defending the uh, IWGP. Intercontinental Championship, which would be very cool in my opinion. Speaking of championships, we just recently seen Vince McMahon say we're going to listen to the fans. Well, part of that, I think, is they're going to throw, start throwing us some bones, some things that we've wanted to see for a while. 
and it's something that they tried to do when they invented the Universal Championship. That is, have Finn Balor have a run with the Universal title. And I don't mean a couple month run. I mean a solid run similar to what we've seen with AJ Styles recently and or Kevin Owens when he had the Universal title who had a decent long run. I believe they're going to try and run with with Finn Balor being the the highlight, the big star on a, on Monday Night Raw. And I think it's going to happen sooner than later. I believe... I don't think that Brock Lesnar is going to lose it to Finn Balor, but I think Brock Lesnar is going to lose it to someone that you can more believe that Finn Balor would beat. Not that, not saying that you wouldn't believe Finn Balor could beat Brock Lesnar, because we did see Brock versus Daniel Bryan, where Daniel Bryan made a smaller, a much smaller guy a, a believable commodity against him. I think Finn Balor could do some, much of the same. But I do believe it's going to be something where Brock loses it to, say, a Drew McIntyre, and then a Drew McIntyre loses it to Finn Balor. Some, there's going to be some transition between the two where, uh, where Finn Balor picks up the title and runs with it through. I think they're going to give him at least a six-month run with the title, see what he can do, see how the fans actually really react to him as being the top guy. Now, speaking of top guys, we've covered two former leaders of the Bullet Club. Now let's cover another guy who is a member of the Bullet Club. Marty Skrull is going to win the Ring of Honor World Championship this year. We know, unlike some of the other elite cast mem- being elite cast members, his contract in Ring of Honor isn't up till April. And... Not knowing where if All Elite Wrestling it is going to get off the ground or when it's going to get off the ground, I could easily see him signing a six-month year extension and staying with Ring of Honor and potentially winning the Ring of Honor Championship sometime in the summer, maybe having even just a short run with it. But I really think that Ring of Honor wants to capitalize on the star power they still have because we do know that the Bucks, the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes, have said that they've left Ring of Honor. Uh, we've heard rumors that Christopher Daniels is potentially done with Ring of Honor as well, at least in a wrestling capacity. So, they brought in some new guys to stack that deck. They brought a, started bringing in PJ Black, Luchasaurus, signed Bandito, signed Jeff Cobb, you know, brought in... Um, PCO and Brody King, some good pieces, some good chess pieces. But we need a guy that the fans are going to resonate with, and Marty's girl is that guy. He's the guy that if Jay Lethal's going to lose the belt, he's the next logical champion. Now, the only thing that could work, hinder this is if All Elite Wrestling is off the ground and running before April, I fully believe that Marty's going to go with his friends. If not, I think Marty's going to make a smart choice, sign maybe a six-month extension, and put some more accolades under his belt. Speaking of accolades, my last prediction, and probably the one closest to my heart, is a wrestler with a ton of accolades in the, in the, inside the ring. That is the Mastodon Vader. I believe... That 2019 is the year we finally see Big Van Vader, or just Vader, go into the WWF or WWE Hall of Fame. And it's kind of a somber putting him in because they should have put him in while he was still alive and he could accept the award, the award on his own valor. It's, it's sad that he didn't live long enough to see it happen because we all know at some point it has to happen. He is too big of a star in the history of pro wrestling to not be into the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, granted, his WWE run was lackluster. But that hasn't seemed to matter before this. It hasn't mattered for guys who had little to no WWE run like Abdul the Butcher or 
you know, some of the Von Erich family who were all in the WWE Hall of Fame or the original Sheik or guys that have made their names elsewhere like Sting but are going into the WWE Hall of Fame because I really do think that they see it as a wrestling Hall of Fame not just WWE so I can't think of anybody I, I can think of other people that are just as deserving but I can't think of anybody more deserving than Vader to go in I think this is his year. Sadly, I wish it would have happened while he was still alive. But I think they're going to do it either anyway. Because they need... They need some of that big-name talent to go in there. And they're kind of... They kind of wasted some of it the past couple of years. Uh, they need some headlining guys, people for you to go to the show because you want to see. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to see a, an introduction by him, but... Putting him in there as a bigger guy with, like, maybe the likes of JBL, the British Bulldogs, which, again, they probably won't do two, more than one posthumous uh, entry. X-Pac potentially going in. Uh, the New Age Outlaws potentially going in. I, there's a whole bunch of people in that era that are right in the time that they should be coming into the WWE Hall of Fame and getting into there. Um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully, this is a year for him. But basically, these are my predictions of things that I think are definitely, I don't want to say definitely, things that are most likely going to happen in 2019 in the, in the realm of professional wrestling. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have some crazy predictions or not so crazy predictions. Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you hit like and share. As always, have a happy and safe new year. Again, from for myself here, I appreciate you guys. You guys don't know, don't know how much I appreciate you watching my videos, commenting on my videos, interacting with me through Twitter, through Facebook, more so through Twitter. I'm more responsive on there. I, and not that I don't like Facebook, but it's just easier to respond to people on Twitter. So... If you're looking to, to get my response, it's easier to get me on Twitter. I digress. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for another year of Heel Heat. Thank you for being here with me throughout the years. Thank you for making 2018, I think, one of my more successful years. We branched out and did it, are starting to try some new things, and you guys are going with me on my journeys, and I definitely appreciate that. Again, Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you whether it's the first video that you've watched or you've watched every video that I put up. I appreciate every one of you. Again, have a happy and safe New Year's. And let's, let's hope 2019 is even better than 2018. Thank you again. My name has been George Coles, and this has been Heal, Heal Heat.